in this intro, this is the intro video. In the, what you're about to see in this video, it's going to be probably about 25 to 30 minute long video today. And it's going to talk about the, the tragic um, things, the, the most deadliest and tragic things ever recorded in, in um, Mother Nature. It's also going to talk about um, a moment of silence to, to all the people that, all the people that, you know, all the people that, um, died in all these tragic things in the last two years and stuff like that. And the one happened last night as well. I'm going to read you, I'm going to, I put something together off of a website. So, 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 so and it'll start telling you what the things that I'm not trying to do pray to listen, but um i don't r really know how to, to really do this and i want to you know just trying to make a history video here so it's going to talk to you about the the couple of the tragic things and everything it's going to read it to you off of my notes that i kind of copy and pasted the website kind of thing and made it so i didn't copy everything i just made it so it's easier to you know see it so that's also what you're going to about to hear in the next minute here um, there's going to be pictures also in here. I'm going to try putting, and then there's going to be, um, there's going to be some music, some talk about, um, disaster movies, Hollywood movies, documentaries, and all kinds of other kind of things. Um, there, there, there is everything else. So, so I hope you like this, this, um, this video and, and enjoy this video is called The History Behind Film, Documentaries, Disasters, Deadly Disasters, Moment of Silence, and, and the look back in history of all disasters that, that, that are recorded and in the last two years and such. And also, in this video, you're going to also hear about maybe ways to teach your kids and adults and anyone, you know, how to, how to vent this stuff from happening and what to do in situations like this. And also, it's going to uh, do film and documentaries and stuff like that. Um, but here it goes. Um, hey, Siri, read this note. Here it goes. I'm going to read you something from uh, Siri and then um, off of these websites about the history, about weather, cold, and everything else. Um, and there's one page where it says a couple diseases that they mentioned in this tragic thing. And I kind of told you, telling you a little about the disease. Hey, Siri. Hey, Siri, read the note. Hey Siri, read this note. I found these items, there were more, but this is as much as I can show. Your note from today called Mother Nature can be one of the most destructive forces on earth. Throwing says, Mother Nature can be one of the most destructive forces on earth, throwing deadly natural disasters in the paths of humans. Hurricanes, earthquakes, flooding fires, and blizzards are all events that are difficult to survive and often results in heavy losses to life floods were considered a blessing by certain civilizations. The Egyptians relied on the Nile's yearly overflow for fertile soil, but they also stand as some of history's most devastating natural disasters. Whether due to heavy rainstorm surges or busted dams, deluges have often claimed thousands of lives and left whole cities in ruin. In some cases, they even permanently change the planet's geography. Every year, nearly 100,000 people perish in natural disasters, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, hurricanes, tsunamis, floods, wildfires, and droughts, while over 150 million are impacted by them. Worldwide, according to the World Health Organization, violent natural disasters have been a fact of human life since the beginning of mankind. But the death counts of the most ancient of these disasters are lost to history. The ancient Mediterranean island of Thera, now Santorini, Greece, for example, experienced a catastrophic volcanic eruption that eradicated the entire Minoan civilization around 1600 BC. 
According to a 2020 study published in the journal Proceedings of the National Academies of Sciences, but exactly how many lives were lost? We'll never know, however. Thanks to historical records and journals, historians can at least estimate the number of fatalities linked to disasters that occurred in the common era. According to such records, the following natural disasters are the deadliest of all time, ranked from lowest to highest estimated death toll. For those disasters for which a death toll range is given, the disaster is ranked by the highest end of the estimate on October 11, 1138. The ground under the Syrian city of Aleppo began to shake. The city sits on the confluence of the Arabian and African plates, making it prone to temblers. But this one was particularly violent. The magnitude of the quake is lost to time. But contemporary chroniclers reported that the city's citadel collapsed and houses crumbled across Aleppo. The resulting death toll is estimated at around 230,000. But that figure comes from the 15th century. And the historian who reported it may have conflated the Aleppo quake with one that occurred in what is now the modern day Eurasian country of Georgia. According to a 2004 paper in the journal Annals of Geophysics, still, this supposed death toll ties this event as the 10th most deadly natural disaster of all time. Tied for 10th place is a catastrophic magnitude 9.1 earthquake that struck under sea off the west coast of Sumatra, Indonesia, on December 26, 2004. The quake created a massive tsunami that killed approximately 230,000 and displaced nearly 2 million people in 14 South Asian and East African countries traveling as fast as 500 miles per hour, 804 kilometers per hour. The tsunami reached land in as little as 15 to 20 minutes after the quake hit, giving residents little time to flee to higher ground. In some places, especially hardest hit Indonesia, the tsunami wave reached over 100 feet 30 meters high, according to World Vision, a humanitarian aid organization. Related, tsunami science advances since the 2004 Indian Ocean tragedy damages from the earthquake and tsunami are estimated at $10 billion. This event is considered the third largest earthquake in the world since 1900 and its tsunami has killed more people than any other tsunami in recorded history. According to NOAA's National Centers for Environmental Information at 3.42 a.m. on July 28, 1976, the Chinese city of Dongshan was razed to the ground by a magnitude 7.8 earthquake. According to a report by the U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, Dongshan, an industrial city with a population of about 1 million at the time of the disaster, suffered staggering casualties of over 240,000. While this was the official death toll, some experts suggest this number is grossly underestimated and that the loss of life was likely closer to 700,000. Reportedly, 85% of Dongshan's buildings collapsed and trembles were felt in Beijing, China, more than 100 miles. 180, the Karinga cyclone made landfall at the port city of Karinga, on India's Bay of Bengal, on November 25, 1839, whipping up a storm surge of 40 feet, 12 meters, according to NOAA's Atlantic Oceanographic and Meteorological Laboratory Hurricane Research Division. The hurricane's wind speeds and category are not known, as is the case for many storms that took place before the 20th century. About 20,000 ships and vessels were destroyed, along with the lives of an estimated 300,000 people. Excessive rainfall over central China in July and August of 1931 triggered the most deadly natural disaster in world history, the central China floods of 1931. The Yangtze River overtopped its banks as spring snowmelt mingled with the over 24 inches, 600 millimeters of rain that fell during the month of July alone. The Yellow River and other large waterways also reached high levels. According to the nature of disaster in China, the 1931 Yangtze River flood, Cambridge University Press, 2018, the flood inundated almost 70,000 square miles, 180,000 square kilometers, and turned the Yangtze into what looked like a giant lake or ocean. Contemporary government numbers put the number of dead at around 2 million, but other agencies, including NOAA, say it may have been as many as 3.7 million people. This article was originally published on April 2, 2018, and was updated on December 17, 2020 by live science contributor Tiffany Means Losses to Life and Property. So what exactly is a blizzard? Well, it is a severe snowstorm in very windy conditions that lasts for hours. During a blizzard, people lose visibility and find it difficult to fight the wind. These snowstorms can knock out basic services and leave towns and villages inoperable for days at a time. Tragically, blizzards can also take lives unexpectedly. This article takes a look at some of the deadliest blizzards in history. The deadliest blizzard on record happened in Iran in February 1972, when 4,000 lives were lost. 
The Iran blizzard dropped more than 10 feet of snow and lasted for six days across the northern and central regions of the country. In southern Iran, however, the numbers were much more drastic. They received 26 feet of snow, and two towns had no survivors. The snow took out power lines, buried towns, and crushed transportation. People were left without food, water, heat, and medical supplies. When the storm finally stopped for a 24-hour period, rescue workers tried to retrieve survivors but were largely unsuccessful. The storm started again, and they were forced to abandon the mission and left behind bread for anybody who could dig their way out of the snow tombs. Bloods were considered a blessing by certain civilizations. The Egyptians relied on the Nile's yearly overflow for fertile soil, but they also stand as some of history's most devastating natural disasters. Whether due to heavy rain, storm surges, or busted dams, deluges have often claimed thousands of lives and left whole cities in ruin. In some cases, they even permanently changed the planet's geography. The disaster began shortly after 3 p.m. on May 31, 1889, when a dam on Pennsylvania's Lake Kanama washed away following several days of drenching rain. The collapse unleashed some 16 million tons of water, which quickly turned into a 40-foot-high, half-mile-wide surge of mud and debris. An hour later, the wave struck Johnstown like a giant fist, crushing some 1,600 buildings and sweeping away everything in its path. When the waters finally receded, over 2,200 people were dead and many more were injured or homeless. The flood was later blamed on the poorly maintained dam, which was owned by a hunting and fishing club. But no one was ever held financially liable for the disaster. In the summer of 1931, heavy snowmelt, torrential rains, and seven different cyclonic storms combined to produce the most devastating flood in Chinese history. In the month of July alone, central China was swamped by as much precipitation as it typically received in a year and a half. By August, the Yangtze, Yilo, and Wai rivers had all burst through their badly managed dikes and flooded an area larger than the size of England. Thousands died from drowning during the initial phase of the flood, but even more followed due to widespread famine and outbreaks of diseases such as cholera, typhoid fever, and dysentery. Cholera, cholera is an acute infection of the intestine, which begins suddenly with painless watery diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting. Although most people who become infected have very mild diarrhea or symptom-free infections, Malnourished people experience more severe symptoms. Severe cholera cases present with profuse diarrhea, this leading one to rapid the, dehydration um, and, if untreated, death. Dysentery, dysentery can be extremely serious, article. even life-threatening if untreated. It causes severe diarrhea, which depletes the body of fluids and essential salts. If fluids are not replaced, then dehydration can cause shock and even death. Hepatitis, hepatitis is an infection, an inflammation of the liver. It usually begins with an abrupt onset of fever, body weakness loss of appetite, nausea, and abdominal discomfort, followed by jaundice within a few days. The disease may range from mild, lasting one to two weeks, to severe disabling illness, lasting several months. In areas, highly says, to severe disabling illness, lasting several months. In areas highly endemic for hepatitis A, most infections occur during early childhood. Typhoid fever, it's estimated that up to 20 million people worldwide suffer from the illness each year. It spread through contaminated food on safe water and poor sanitation, and it is highly contagious. Not to be confused with typhus paratyphoid fever or salmonellosis. Typhoid fever, other names enteric fever, slow fever causative agent, salmonella, enteric a serological variant typhi, shown under a microscope with flagellar stain, specialty infectious disease symptoms fever that starts low and increases daily, possibly reaching as high as 104.9 degrees Fahrenheit, 40.5 degrees Celsius headache weakness and fatigue, muscle aches, sweating, dry cough, loss of appetite and weight loss, stomach pain, diarrhea, or constipation rash, swollen stomach, enlarged liver or spleen, usual onset 1-2 weeks after ingestion duration usually 7-10 to 10 days after antibiotic treatment begins, longer if there are complications or drug resistance causes gastrointestinal infection of salmonella, enterica serovar typhi risk factors, work in or travel to areas where typhoid fever is established, Work as a clinical microbiologist, handling salmonella typhi bacteria, have close contact with someone who is infected or has recently been infected with typhoid fever, drink water polluted by sewage that contains salmonella typhi prevention preventable by vaccine. Travelers to regions with higher typhoid prevalence are usually encouraged to get a vaccination before travel. Treatment antibiotics hydration, surgery in extreme cases, quarantine to avoid exposing others, not commonly done in modern times, Prognosis likely to recover without complications if proper antibiotics administered and diagnosed early. 
If infecting strain is multidrug resistant or extensively drug resistant, then prognosis is more difficult to determine. Among untreated acute cases, 10% will shed bacteria for three months after initial onset of symptoms, and 2-5% will become chronic typhoid carriers. One, some carriers are diagnosed by positive tissue specimen. Chronic carriers are by definition asymptomatic. One, typhoid fever, also known as typhoid, is a disease caused by Salmonella serotype typhi bacteria. Two symptoms may vary from mild to severe, and usually begin six to 30 days after exposure. Three, four, often there is a gradual onset of a high fever over several days. Three, this is commonly accompanied by weakness, abdominal pain, constipation, headaches, and mild vomiting. Four, five, some people develop a skin rash with rose-colored spots. Four, in severe cases, people may experience confusion. Five, without treatment, symptoms may last weeks or months, for diarrhea is uncommon 5. Other people may carry the bacterium without being affected, but they are still able to spread the disease to others. 6. Typhoid fever is a type of enteric fever, along with paratyphoid fever 2. So far, S. enterica typhi is only known to infect and replicate within humans. 7. The cause is the bacterium Salmonella enterica subsp enterica serovar typhi growing in the intestines, pierced patches, mesenteric lymph nodes, spleen, liver, gallbladder, bone marrow and blood 4 5. Typhoid is spread by eating or drinking food or water contaminated with the feces from an infected person. 6. Risk factors include limited access to clean drinking water and poor sanitation 2. Those who have not yet been exposed to on July 10, 1913 in Death Valley, the United States experiences the highest temperature ever recorded on Earth. Measurements showed that the temperature had reached a whopping 134 degrees Fahrenheit or 56.7 degrees Celsius situated between a series of high, steep mountain ranges in California's Mojave Desert, Death Valley's extremely low elevation, 282 feet below sea level in some places, and long, narrow configuration keep the region's temperatures consistently high throughout much of the year. Triple-digit temperatures there are not unusual, with the mercury consistently topping 100 degrees for more than half the year. The summer of 2001, for example, had 154 consecutive days of 100 degrees or higher 1936. Coldest February to hottest July in U.S. history no year in U.S. weather records was more extreme temperature-wise than that of 1936. Nationally, February was the coldest such on record and July the hottest such since at least 1895. Both those records stand today. More than 80 years later, the summer of 1936, June-August, remains the warmest in U.S. records and the winter of 1935 to 1936 December-February is still the coldest winter on record for the Northern Plains states and second. Coldest winter for the entire contiguous U.S. Nowhere were the extremes more pronounced than in the Dakotas. In North Dakota the states, all-time coldest temperature of minus 60 degrees was observed at partial on February 15th while its hottest reading on record, 121 degrees Fahrenheit, occurred on July 6th in Steele. Likewise, South Dakota went from a state all-time low of minus 58 degrees at McIntosh on February 17th to an all-time high of 120 degrees at Gam Valley on July 5th. The latter record has since been tied. Figure 3. A graph of the daily temperature extremes at Steele, North Dakota for the year of 1936. The 171 degrees spread from minus 50 degrees in February to 121 degrees in July is just short of the most extreme for any location in the U.S. over the course of a single year partial. North Dakota saw 172 degrees spread from 60 degrees to 112 degrees, as did McIntosh. South Dakota minus 58 degrees to 114 degrees in 1936. The only other locations in the world that may have experienced even a greater range in annual temperature extremes may be places in Siberia's Pole of Cold region, where winter temps of minus 80 degrees and summer temps of 90 degrees are fairly common, although I'm not sure if such have ever happened in the same year. Image credit, Richard Barreler, Chief Meteorologist, KGNS-TV Laredo, Texas. What was also extraordinary for both the cold waves and heat waves of 1936 were how persistent they were. Langdon, North Dakota, was the epicenter of the cold. It remained below freezing day and night for 92 consecutive days, from November 30th through February 29th, and below zero degrees for 41 consecutive days, January 11th to February 20th. The latter was a record for any location in the contiguous U.S. Langdon's warmest February temperature was a frigid 15 degrees, Bismarck's was just 23 degrees, and the hamlet of Amenia managed a monthly high of only 10 degrees during January. Another contiguous national record for coldest monthly maximum, Turtle Lake, also in North Dakota, averaged minus 19.4 degrees for the month of February, the coldest monthly mean in U.S. records outside of Alaska.
just a short five months later the hottest summer and most intense heat waves on record engulfed much of the U.S., with the Dakotas yet again at the epicenter of the most extreme temperature anomalies. Do you want to hear the next one? So, that was Siri reading the, the 20, almost 20-minute 20 um, note that I um, put. These are from Real Facts. One website's the History Channel. So I'm getting thanks to the History Channel. One thing is uh, Life Science. And then a couple other um, ones, Wikipedia. And one's another website. I don't remember what the name is, but they're all, you can research them all on Google. If you just type in these things on um, wherever you want to type in from what here. The reason why I put some of these diseases formats in here, I know it's COVID right now. So people don't want to hear about diseases, but they said they said these diseases in, in one the article before to say this is what this is the reason why some of these people died. So I was like, well, I don't know what these diseases are and what they do and what they're called and what what kind of what what they are. So I'm like, if I don't know, maybe other people don't know. So that's why I added those in there. So so next time if you don't want them in there because they, they say in the article before, then I won't do that next time. But that's why I have them in there. So it explains those diseases, what they are. I didn't do the third one because I don't really want to make a 4,000 minute video. You know, I'm already at 20 minutes, so over 20 minutes right now. Also, one of the best movies ever put out, Hollywood movies ever put out with Storms, was Twister. They're thinking of making a Twister 2, and the Whistling cast was coming back. But the studio wants to green light it three years ago, so I don't know if they're going to do that. Also, the second most coolest um, thing was um, was um, was um, um, what's the movie called? Um, um, ooh, um. Um, I forget, but it as the big storm and stuff. Um, day after tomorrow, that's what it is. And then third one is um, the one with the rock. Um, so it's Terra. There's one with uh, Priest Brosman with a volcano. There's one like that. I forget what that's called. Um, but there's a lot of other movies like that. So check them out. There's a lot of documentaries out there, the History Channel, and all these other networks. You know, explain weather stuff, tornado, storm chasers, and all that stuff. So hope you love this video. This is Ryan Kramer, movie reviews, TV show reviews, studio, and a YouTube channel. Hope you have a great One more thing, the reason why I didn't put this in the, in the video, in, in the ending video, um, because this is bigger than my video. This is to say thanks to all the first responders, firemen, cops, Red Cross, volunteers, anyone that, that helps the, the whole wide world come together when, when a tornado or, or Mother Nature storm hits and, and we get come together and we do, we, 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 do, we come together and we protect one another and we build a community back together. It takes more than one. You know how they say there's no I in team? Well, that works when the only way you can build a nation back together or a town back together or a world back together after a hurricane, tornado or anything like that is everyone, thousands of people from all over the world coming together and helping it out. People, you know, using their nails, you know, all their kind of stuff. doesn't matter if you're not good at building a house. It doesn't matter if you're not build, good at building a town back together, but you will help because that's your duty. And this, this, this one song, next song is to say thanks to everyone that ever helped out in these things. And we also say, um, we also, a moment of silence for the tornado that hit in Texas, Chicago, and all, in Illinois last night with 100 people dead and um, all the houses that burned down and, and you know, uh, got busted down and stuff. So we get a moment of silence. So, Listen to the song after the song, the video will end, and I will, I might not even do a credits because this is 
already like a 30 minute video already but at this point just listen to this song it's a perfect song and i hope you i hope you like this um it's a really good song and we're all here on this everyone that puts their effort in building a city or town after a tragic storm is a hero here's the song There's a moment of silence right now, and then I'm going to play the song. Hero. Everyone that comes together and this and to build a town is is this hero that this song that I'm playing the song for. You're all heroes in this. Hey Siri, play Angel the song.
Hey Siri, play Sweet Surrender, the song. Here's Sweet Surrender by Sarah McLaughlin. Sweet Surrender. Sweet surrender. Arm gun. Hey Siri, play Purple Rain. Purple Rain by Prince and the Revolution now playing. So that's the ending of the 30 minute video. Um, just to let you know, um, thanks for watching this video. And I, if you like this kind of stuff, if you thought this video was too long or you want me to shorten it a little bit next time for a history video, let me know. I won't do as much, but if you like the length and you don't care how long it is, let me know that too. Anything in the comments below, let me know. Um, there's gonna be there there's gonna be probably maybe one more video tonight, but this took most of my time. Um and I hope you liked it. If there's anything you want me to change, let me know. Work on, you know. Um I give a shout out to Siri because she's the one that um 
help me read this stuff to you, I give a shout out to Google because they're the ones that help me find the search stuff. I give a shout out to Wikipedia because they're the ones that gave me some of the information. I also give thanks to um, Earth Science because they're the ones that also give me the information that I found here. I also um, do the History Channel because they also give me this history. And I also give out to three other websites because they were, they were um, also the ones that gave me this this uh, this stuff. And just to let you know, um, I am not trying to make money off this. I'm just trying to give history out to people. Special thanks to everyone. And I hope you like the moment of silence and the songs that I picked. Peace out. And have a great day. And be safe out there. Bye.